Hi, in this lecture, we will be discussing about operating modes of bioreactors. So, topic outline, we will talk about batch process, the fed batch, and the continuous processes. So, for the batch process, we already discussed this in, uh, in several uh, previous lectures. So, batch process is a closed system. So, once you started the process, you, you do not add anything. So, no additions following inoculation. So, except for pH control, where you add acids or bases just to... Um, control the pH or input air for aerobic uh, or uh, aerobic fermentations. So you have a defined beginning and an end to this process. So this is a general um, layout of a batch process. You have your um, loading period, you load your um, you have your uh, culture media, you load everything, you, you have your um, you process the uh, raw materials, you sterilize them, and then you inoculate them, this, uh, this culture media, with your uh, organism. And then you allow the process to continue. So inoculation to harvesting, so this is where uh, the time or the process uh, is actually doing. Your, uh, your bacteria or your organism is producing your product. And then after the, after the fermentation, you harvest it. And then after that, you clean your materials, your, um, your bioreactors, for another set of loading. Now, we call the downtime is the non-productive phase of the cycle, which is usually the cleaning up to loading period. So, you, uh, the, the, the downside with the batch process is that there is a, always a downtime. So, you have... Uh, Actually, intermittent periods of uh, production, then downtime, production, downtime. So, examples of those done in batch process are production of alcoholic beverages. So, enzymes and amino acids. So, the production phase, again, is the one in this side. And then, you have your downtime, where you are not actually doing much. So, advantages of your batch process, you have lower initial capital expenditure. It's easy to terminate and restart the process in the event of contamination. And of course, um, since it is a batch, only that batch is contaminated. So, it's if you need to, um, to throw it out, it's only a small amount that you need to throw out. So, if you have successful in production of secondary metabolites and traditional fermentation products. Actually, it's one of the easiest to do. The disadvantage of the batch process is that it's not as efficient in biomass and primary metabolite production. Because again, uh, if you remember your growth curve, you, are, you want uh, in the primary metabolites and your biomass are only produced during the exponential growth phase. Or not exactly only, but the optimum production is on the exponential growth phase. And your batch process has, since it has a beginning and an end, def uh, defined beginning and an end, it's inevitable that it will go past the exponential growth phase and then you will go to stationary phase. And once that happens, you need to stop the reaction and then harvest. Now, if it's a secondary metabolite, it's easier because the secondary metabolites appear in the stationary and the dead phases, actually stationary phases. And um, it's, uh, it's more um, idealistic to have a batch process for that because you can prolong the stationary phase. So you can immediately um, use or you can do batch process during that. Now, uh, another disadvantage for the batch process is the lag period due to the downtime. So you have cleaning, you need to clean, you need to process your materials, so on and so forth. So there's, uh, there's a time and effort invested in uh, setting up your materials or your uh, bioreactor again for another batch so uh, another um that's one one of the major problems especially cleaning so it's it actually takes a lot of time and effort just to clean especially for very large fermenters now you have batch to batch variability again batch one batch two batch three we cannot even though you have highly controlled you have a very well defined formulation for the the substrate formulation for the culture media formulation for the materials still there might be some um, uncontrolled um, variables there that will cause variability from one batch to another so there's also a greater running cost for preparing and maintaining your stock culture so also, since you are cleaning it again and again, repetitive sterilization can create stress on the instrument. So it, uh, it diminishes the, the life of the instrument, the, 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 the materials that you are using. And again, you have 
uh, personal requirement. So, greater personal require personal required in order to actually, um, because you are monitoring how the process goes on. Now, we have a fed batch process. For the fed batch process, it's a modified batch process. You intermittently add nutrients to the batch process. So, sometimes uh, this is done because sometimes very high concentration of the substrates leads to too much growth and product formation and you want to control that. So, you add intermittently the nutrients. Another one is that it may, um, for example, the, the condition is that you need to limit a certain substrate to this amount. Although you want to prolong this, for example, exponential growth, uh, an unlimited amount of a certain substrate, you need to add your new, uh, add or replenish the substrate in the middle of the fermentation in order to actually, uh, for example, prolong the exponential phase or to optimize the condition. That's actually a fed batch process. So, and then for the continuous process, so continuous process, the nutrients are continuously added, products are continuously removed. It's usually more like um, a conveyor belt system. It's very similar to that. So in a continuous process, you want to maintain steady state and it, the, the, the reaction is assumed in a steady state condition. So that means you have a constant cell density and a constant nutrient concentration. So for, a stead, uh, for steady state or rather for continuous process, it's very important to take note of the chemostat of your uh, of your system the chemostat is the environment where the conditions are maintained constant and of course your turbidostat whereas your cell concentration concentration is maintained constant by of course turbidity measurement so in um in your uh, continuous process you usually use steer tank bioreactors continuous steer tank so you have your uh Batch growth. So basically, it's CSTR, sealed tank reactor, continuous sealed tank reactor, but it's a continuous sealed tank bioreactor if you are using um, living organisms there. So this is a steered fermenter. So for it's a continuous process because as you notice, you have substrate coming in and then um, product going out. So for a continuous uh, steered fermenter, for, so these are the different modes of a bioreactor uh, designs. So, one is continuous input, continuous output. And then you also have a continuous input, whereas uh, this input is mixed with uh, feedback. So, it can be, for example, cells. Let's say, for instance, um, as the only substrate is coming in, and then you have your cells. Cells plus the materials plus the culture media going out. And then this is a, uh, a separator that separates out, say, um, cells. The cells are... Um, are fed back again to the reactor so that uh, the, 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 the number of cells in the, inside this reactor is maintained. So you have uh, a type of a feedback system. And then you have multi-stage simple chain reactor. So one reactor going in and then it passes on to the next, next vessel, to the next vessel, and so on. So it may or may not, may not have a recycle stream. And then you have multiple substrate addition. So you have a substrate here coming to the next one, but this one is also another injection of a fresh substrate. And then again, fresh substrate injection. So it's similar to this one, except that instead of the input coming only from this tank, you also have a fresh substrate addition. And then we also have pipe flow with feedback. So it's a continuous flow system. The reaction is occurring within this um, this tube, it's a quite a long tube, and then it might have a feedback going down. So this is a general um, view of your continuous steer tank bioreactor, a schematic representation. So you have your flow rate coming in, your, bi your biomass, your substrates, and your product is inside, and then, of course, it's steer tank, you have an impeller. And then uh, the outflow going out, so you have your biomass, your substrate, and your product. So this is a plug flow reactor. So you have here, uh, usually for biogas production, so you have waste product coming in, in a reactor feed. So it's feed into, this is in the inside of the reactor. So you have here agitators, it moves because this, uh, since this is uh, more of a waste treatment facility, so it's... This is a sludge, basically. So you need to move a very, the very it's, uh, it's made of viscous material and some solids. So it's quite um, you need to have your um, agitators to move it 
forward. So, moving it forward, you produce the biogas as the organisms move forward, you produce your biogas there. And then, you extract uh, solid residues out, you get the press water, um, you can also um, adjust your water circulation. So, for example, if your feed is too dry, you can inject water, recycle, this one is recycled water, from your the watering tank, so separator tank. So, that's for plug flow. Oh, by the way, this is a continuous kasi you have continuous input and of course continuous output. So, continuous process applications are uh, usually done for single cell protein production. Because in single cell protein, your product is the, the cell itself. Uh, it's a protein-rich cell usually added to feeds. So, that's SCP. And since your product is the cell, you want to be on the exponential growth phase as fa as much as you can as long as you can you want to be on the exponential phase so you do the uh, continuous uh, continuous type of process so another one is our organic solvent production so mo notice that these their products or these are for the production of primary metabolites so waste digestion as uh, as you can see on the previous slide and then food fermentation vac vaccines and cell cultures are currently being studied but i I actually do not know yet of a current system that con that does continuous process using uh, for the process of food fermentation, actually. So, advantages and disadvantages of your continuous process. So, for the advantages of the continuous process, you have uh, more intensive equipment used. So, this, there is a greater return of investment. Why? Because there is, uh, there is a very, very... Uh, not exactly short, but there is minimum amount of downtime. So you, you uh, since it's a continuous process, for example, for a, prod a year, one year of production, you only need to clean up for say once or twice a year, versus for a batch process. If you are doing batch process for uh, say one week fermentation, so you there is 52 weeks in a year, so you need to clean up again 52 times. So. In the continuous process, you only need to clean up once or twice or every quarter. So there is a greater use of equipment. There is uh, minima you minimize the lag time. So there's a greater return of investment. So you again minimize the lag phase and the downtime. And then there is a greater labor savings. Why? Because continuous process can be automated and it's easier to automate the continuous process. So basically, uh, machines will be replace uh, will be replacing manual labor so you have less um, cost for personnel now disadvantages for the continuous process it's easy to contaminate and once it's contaminated it's very difficult to actually uh, it's very difficult it's challenge to uh, conduct uh, uh, troubleshootings to know the point of contamination that's one point and of course since it's a continuous process it might take a long time before you actually detect a contamination and by that time there you already produce a lot of um, the co contaminated products so that's one of the disadvantages of continuous processes so mutants are easily se selected and difficult to control again since it's a continuous process you have your um the residence time of the organisms there although ideally you, 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 the organisms there should be moving throughout this, uh, the stages of your continuous process. But you cannot say for sure. So there might be some, uh, some uh, small population that, are, that remain or th they might catch on to certain impellers and then remain inside. And since they, they, they are very, uh, they, their residence time is very long inside a certain stage or a certain part of your um, setup, equipment setup, they can mutate and it's it's difficult to control so again technical difficulties so it you can automate them but in order to automate them you need to um to actually know uh it's more technically challenging and high investment capital because compared to the equipment for batch processes continuous process equipment are much more expensive okay so that's it for this part the next part of the lecture will discuss about sterilization steps